Everyone, welcome back to the Midlife Makeover Show. Today, we are talking about menopause. I know what you're going to say. Again? (laughs) Yes, again. But we're going to talk about menopause in a different way. Because instead of talking about the usual hot flashes and mood changes of menopause, we're going to talk about how to put painful sex UTIs and incontinence in the rear view mirror. Bye, Felicia. (laughs) Besides, I think midlife should be the best part of life. But when you're dealing with issues like that, it can crimp our midlife and making it stressful, annoying, and embarrassing. We have just the right woman to solve our problems today on the show. You are about to meet Kate Wells author of A Forecast for Health, an entrepreneur with 20 plus years experience in bioidentical hormone products and hormone and genetic testing. Wow. She has a passion for helping women find health solutions that work. As a former teacher, Kate can never get enough learning and talking about the science of health. Well, you've come to the right place because I am the same way and I love to talk, of course. <laughs> Parlor Games, the name of her company, is the brainchild of Kate Wells and Kirsty Hegg. Best friends since 1998, Kirsty turned to Kate for help when her body betrayed her after menopause. And that true though, it almost feels like a betrayal. Like, what are you doing to me? Together, they realize that women need science, solutions, and sisterhood, love that, for the second half of life. And so Parlor Games was born. Together, they are saving the world. This is my favorite part of your bio. They are saving the world one vagina at a time. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) Welcome, Kate Wells, to the show. Thank you, Wendy. I am just so delighted to be here. As you, as you mentioned, I love to talk about hormones and, you know, never thought this phrase would come out of my mouth, but I love to talk about vaginas too. <laughs> I love it. I, me too. I was like, I want your job. I just want to sit around and talk about vaginas all day. Okay. So what would your vagina say? What would your vagina, question for you, what would your vagina say, have said, 20 years ago and what would your vagina say now oh 20 years ago it would say oh make sure you're doing all the exercises we got to get all the exercises going on around here because coming down the pike there are some changes be careful yeah so that would be 20 years ago and today well because i have found some solutions um my vagina says just keep at it Keep at it with those exercises. Keep at it with that estriol, that important hormone that keeps everything peachy down here. (laughs) Peachy, I know. (laughs) And we're going to talk more about your products too. I love all your product names. So yes, you are, you are, what, what do you call yourself? A a bio, bioscience nerd or something like that. Yes. I'm pretty much a science nerd. I'm a businesswoman, but I love the science and, uh, I, I just have the best job in the world combining the two. So, yeah. So let's see, um, which one do we want to start with? You want to talk about incontinence first, painful sex or the UTIs, which one? No, let's, let's start with, um, incontinence and okay. UTIs and we'll flow then. Unintended. <laughs> <Nope>. Unintended. <laughs> let's slow it back. Maintaining a flow in the vagina. How about that? Yes. Oh, so um, little did we know that um, with with maturity and Mm -hmm. the passing of time comes a loosening of that little control that we have Mm -hmm. when we need to pee. Mm -hmm. Um, First off, we start to laugh just a little too hard um, when we're there with our girlfriends. And that's a little (laughs) surprise. Um, Or we go for a run or we jump down something, or we we do something that stresses our body just a little bit too much. And Mm. yeah, there's a little wet surprise. And um, if you, yeah, I tell you what, you know, if you walk down the aisle in the grocery store, not just look at the feminine products, but look at all the range of incontinence products, feminine Mm. protection products for incontinence. I mean, do that one day. Next time you're in the grocery Mm. store, it's like, this is a big issue. 
it's a yep. big issue because there aren't generally discussions, you know, in our community about how, how what can we do about this? Mm. So um, the muscles around the bladder that hold kind of the bladder mm -hmm. and then the skin that is along the tube that goes from the bladder to the outside world, those all have estrogen receptors. And they're oh. sitting around there like, I would like some estrogen, please. Could I have some estrogen, please? Could I have some estrogen, please? And in the absence of estrogen, especially postmenopause, that's when all those, um, the muscles and the skin cells start to change. Mm. I know. Who Interesting. I would have never thought that about the bladder, mm -hmm. that it actually has yep. a little estrogen receptors there. That's right. Those all, all the cells there just saying, could I have some estrogen? <laughs> so by putting a little bit of estrogen back in the body and we're talking about estriol which is the weakest of the estrogens that can help maintain those mm. muscles it can help maintain the skin that lines the tube of the urethra that goes out into the wide world and so it helps us um keep that area strong and healthy um, and of course, um, exercises kind of including Kegels, but many others can help the muscles be strong in that area. But this mm. estriol piece is important. Yeah. Um, so someone who is typically, you know, using a small thin pad, for example, that's, mm. that's an indication that it could be time to, to add a little bit of estriol. Mm -hmm. If you're getting to the point where you need a thicker pad, it's long past time. Mm. And so adding estriol is going to be important. Now, I want to talk about this from a longer term point of view. Here I am, 61. Um, I've got this in place. And I've got this in place because when I'm 71 or 75 or 80 or 85, I don't want to be carted off to a home by my children mm. um, because I'm incontinent. That is one of the risks for women. Huh. If they, right, if they um, um, over time um, have incontinence to the point where, you know, they, they can't get to the bathroom in time, um, it is one of those indicators that um, someone may need more extensive care. Oh, wow. So you want to take these steps early on to maintain that tissue so that further down the line, you can, you've maintained control, um, not just of your bladder, but of where you live, where you can live and, and, and how much yeah. support you need. Yes. So your, your 80 year old vagina and bladder can thank you for, <laughs> for taking care of it. Well, that is so, I would have never thought about that. So it's more than like just a little tinkle when you giggle, like it could mm -hmm. be a very serious problem. I had a friend that actually had that issue. Of course, I'm not going to state her name, but it was, you know, it was, it was embarrassing. It was like, she didn't know what to do about it. And then I felt mm -hmm. like when she went to the doctor, they were just immediately like, Oh, go, you know, let's do uh, some procedure, some surgery or something like that. Instead of there mm -hmm. being something as simple as adding a little bit of what you, um, what'd you call it? The not estrogen. Estriol. Estriol. Yeah, estriol yes one of the versions yeah so then how um, do you do oh go ahead so the uh the other component to this is mm -hmm. increased urgency so mm -hmm. when we're young you know running around in our 20s we're like oh i have to pee you have to pee it can be <laughs> an hour and a half before yeah. you actually go right when you're in your 60s 70s and definitely into your 80s you can get that oh i have to pee you may have two minutes Mm. You may have 30 seconds. So <laughs> it's that increased urgency. And so, again, this in fact impacts life. I was yeah. talking to one woman the other day, one of our customers, and she had said, oh, I can't thank you enough. I used to plan how I would leave the house. Mm. Um, if I had to go to the grocery store, I had to know where that bathroom was. I know where the bathroom is in all the stores in my area mm. because when I have to go, I have to go. It was one time she said she was so it, she was caught short so desperately that she ended up just having to go behind this building and he became oh, bush. Yeah. I mean, it is that urgency 
Mm-hmm. Um, and that changes women's lives because of course, yeah. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it doesn't give you that freedom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. Right. You might not want to go to a party um, because, um, again. You, and you, you certainly don't want to wear one of those cute little jumpsuits. <laughs> you can't get the damn thing With off your diaper fast inside. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so what is your solution for that then? So estriol cream is the way to go. Um, Mm. You know, some practitioners can um, order um, a systemic estrogen, like a Mm -hmm. patch, or it can give you, you know, hormone Mm -hmm. replacement in a pill form, which is really good, you know, Mm -hmm. potentially for the whole body. But Mm -hmm. we're interested in getting um, that estriol specifically where it's needed. And so our product, Silky Peach Cream, um, we developed it for vaginal health, which we'll come to in a minute. Yeah. Um, but it also has great applicability to um, that area in our pelvis, which is very much related to the bladder and the urethra. So a little pump or two of that a day will help rebuild the reservoir of estrogen in that area, which helps those tissues be strong and healthy. And uh, I can vouch that that stuff is good because I've used it. And Unfortunately, I left it in Malibu and now I'm all the way in Portugal and I don't have it. I know, but it is so good. I mean, and it's not just for that though. Go ahead and right. tell, tell them what else it's good for. Yeah. So this is this is back to the story of how we began, how Kirsty and I began Paula Games. She had reached out and said, Kate, what's going on? My vagina is dry and sex is starting to hurt. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, honey, I have the answer for you. <laughs> and um, I gave her some estriol cream. And within two weeks, she said, this is the bomb. This is a difference. Um, yeah. It's changed things. We're back to having sex again. It's comfortable. Um, I'm not so dry. It's it's not painful. And we, you know, sat down with our cups of tea and said, you know, we've got to bring this to the world. We have to bring this to the world. Women are not mm. getting the answers from their practitioners. Yes. They may they may struggle and, and build up the confidence to mention it in a, mm-hmm. an annual exam. Um, but so many practitioners don't have really a, a, a good idea of what can be done. Right. Um, we actually have a wall of shame of some of the comments that have come from practitioners. Uh. A, a lot of them will say, oh, it's just part of getting old. And honestly, you just want to smack them. Um, <laughs> I know. Well, I do. Um, so we we decided. Well, well, let's try this. Um, we put together um, a sample and our business plan. I mean, we're both entrepreneurs. We're both business women, and so we we came about it. I I would say the right way with a plan and and testing our market yeah. and testing our messaging and and Kirsty, bless her heart, she has the best sense of humor in the whole world. Um, right from the get-go she said oh this is going to be fun we're going to laugh about this and she's right because otherwise you'd cry you know here we are (laughs) we're 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 oftentimes post-menopause by this time our estrogen levels have dropped Mm -hmm. and so we can no longer get pregnant our kids are out of the house you know we're owning who we are in the world we're just at this awesome wisdom a uh, place in our lives and our vaginas hurt we can't have sex with yes, our cuties so exactly we said, we're gonna change the messaging around this and that's that's what we've been doing oh i love it yeah and you can laugh so much that you don't pee in your pants <laughs> feel free to laugh <laughs> no tinkling there yeah the um the silk, silky peach right and then what it's called mm-hmm. i know i can yes, picture the label peach. right now sitting inside my RV in Malibu. Um, but definitely I noticed literally probably within 48, 72 hours, I could tell the difference with moisture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's right. Mm-hmm. Now but I had no um, idea that it, at the same time, it was also helping with something like incontinence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that uh, whole, that whole area in the lower pelvis, um, just so many estrogen receptors, just because we're done with um, our reproductive phase of our life. Mm-hmm. We're not done with hormones. 
we need hormones in so many places in our body, particularly yeah. in this lower pelvic area. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's often the first thing that women really begin to notice postmenopause. It's like, oh, it hurts to wipe. Um, yes, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they want to have sex. They want to be intimate. And they kind of grin and bear it. It's like, oh, just do it because mm -hmm. they know their husband wants to. Um, but it does not need to be like that. When you start replenishing yeah. just gradually, I'm going to use the word reservoir again, you're rebuilding the reservoir of estrogen in that um, the around the vulva and, and mm -hmm. inside the skin of the vagina. Mm -hmm. um, then it just becomes healthy again. Otherwise, um, this, you know, when you fall over and you graze your knee, what does it look like? Well, it looks yucky. Yeah. <laughs> The skin is torn. It's all yes. red. Yes. Um, that's what it can get like inside a vagina. Yeah. Where I... the skin is it's almost it's that like friction. It no it's the friction and... too. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, the, and the walls of the vagina can close in on themselves and rub against themselves. So without the natural lubrication that our bodies used to make, we want to put estrogen back in so that those cells can again make some of that lubrication we're never going to be gushing like we were in our 20s and 30s mm -hmm. right we can put some natural um moisture back into those cells so. and i think that's the key word there is natural because as opposed to just going and just using ky jelly or something like that right right because ky right. is not really doing anything it's not mm -hmm. i mean yes it's providing lubrication but it's not providing the estrogen that you need Right. It's not doing any repair work. Yeah. Um, and we, we did actually do some uh, pretty extensive research on lubes. I mean, mm -hmm. what a tough job that was. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, it's, it's a slippery slope. We all slope. love our jobs. <laughs> it's a slippery slope, you know, but <laughs> if you ever need help in the marketing team, you know, I'm more than happy to. <laughs> <laughs> sit around and come team. up with a yeah. name mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so we we did we did we dug in to really understand how lubes work and are uh, this very few that really kind of match the ph of the body um and have that same kind of um uh um well the term is osmolity it's like how the how mm. the 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 particular moisture fits mm. the moisture in your body um and we did pin it down to one that we uh, we wholesale um just because you always you're always going to need some form of lube as you get older mm -hmm. um because mm -hmm. like i said you're you're never going to be back to that gush, gushing phase right but if you keep that skin healthy um, and you use a lube then sex can be fun again oh you should see the letters we get and the and the oh. notes and the messages we get on the phone and you know, so people sometimes send us cards as well, how thankful they are to have this most intimate and fun and pleasurable part of their life just returned to them. Yeah. You know, you're literally you're changing, changing lives mm -hmm. in so many different mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. I mean, just, so, yeah, that is amazing. So mm -hmm. let's talk uh, UTIs. Right. So if you think about it, um, you know, I just mentioned that inside of the vagina can get like tiny little micro tears and grazes. Mm -hmm. Well, so can the inside of the urethra, the tube that goes from the bladder to outside. Mm. You know, the inside of that tube and that that has a skin layer. We don't tend to think about it having a skin layer, but there is one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that too can get um, dry and damaged and tiny little micro tears in there. And so by adding the estriol back in, um, we keep it smooth. Mm. And we want that because that prevents um, bacteria from gaining ground. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Smooth, healthy skin. Um, then, uh, you know, bacteria just can't get a toehold in there. And it's really common for women, particularly older women, to have repeat UTIs for which they are on a series of antibiotics after antibiotics yes. after antibiotics, which, mm -hmm. you know, is a challenge to the body in the long term. Um, but they can end up with interstitial cystitis. It's, it's not an infection, but it's just that irritation. Now, mm -hmm. there are real drawbacks to that because 
you know, that that sense of, oh, I need to pee. Oh, I need to pee. Oh, I need to go. Mm-hmm. You can get that two or three hours after you've gone to bed. So you get up and you go to the bathroom, you pee and you come back to bed and you're trying to get back to sleep again. A couple mm-hmm. of hours later, that same irritation. Oh, I need to get up and go to pee. Yes. So you get up mm-hmm. again. So then before you know it, you've got really disrupted sleep. And Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a story, you don't need as much sleep as you get older. Um, Sleep is important. (laughs) I was going to say, I need it. I need it so bad. Any age. (laughs) Um, And so um, being on top of that interstitial stasitis, that that irritation is important, not just for the health of that uh, particular area of the body, but it's important for sleep too. So. Mm -hmm. When do these symptoms or issues, challenges typically happen? Is it perimenopause, menopause, postmenopause, or all of the above? Um, so a combination of anecdotal and, you know, we, we have so many women that we hear from. We have like thousands of women um, that mm-hmm. provide the feedback to us, um, but also medical research as well. Um, suggests that estrogen levels drop, begin to really drop just before um, that menopausal transition Mm -hmm. um, and then thereafter. And Mm -hmm. because so much of this area of women's health, vaginal health and urinary health is related to estrogen, Mm -hmm. it's strongly tied to how quickly somebody's estrogen levels are dropping. Mm. Now, we do store um, hormones, the steroid hormones, progesterone, testosterone, estrogen um, in our fat tissue. So Mm. if we have um, a large supply of fat tissue, it could be several years that we're gradually breaking that down and releasing estrogen from those that fatty tissue. Hmm. Um, So it can often be that the slender woman her mm. estrogen levels may well drop sooner. Um, and so she may experience those symptoms before another woman. However, ah. having said that, everyone is so different. Everyone's yeah. genes are so different. How they process and make hormones is so different. So it's probably from that late 40s through mm. to you know mid to late 50s, where this issue really begins to be a problem for most women. Yeah. Um, but you really are that. a science nerd, aren't you? I, <laughs> but that is fascinating. I, I would have never thought of that. And if only every gynecologist, you know, obstetrician, everything was just like you that would know these basic, you know, this basic information, the knowledge, just wisdom to make our lives mm-hmm. easier. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. feel like myself included, I hopped around from one doctor to another. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? And I'll admit, I did had not even heard of the word perimenopause until I started the show. And that was mm-hmm. maybe about a year and a half ago. Isn't mm-hmm. that crazy? I, I was like, Perry, what? Who's this perimenopause expert that come in on the show? I was like, what is that? Mm-hmm. And I ne- and I had never heard of that. And here it was. I struggled for years with like crazy wild symptoms. I did finally find a doctor that had you know properly tested all of my hormones, and sure enough, I was on empty mm-hmm. on everything. I was like, well, yeah. that explains a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. So for those um, for the listeners out there that may not know the way I didn't know, what is the difference between perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, or how do you know which category you're in? Well, a lot of this is to do with the balance between two key hormones, progesterone and um, estradiol. Estradiol is our most potent of our estrogens. Hmm. And um, when we, in our prime reproductive years, we have a surge of estrogen in the first half of the cycle, and that is kind of balanced and matched by a surge of progesterone in the second half. And so they kind of balance each other out. Mm-hmm. Now, what happens over time is that um, those progesterone levels will drop sooner than estrogen levels. Mm. And because you need the two to balance each other out, like two sides of a teeter-totter, if you are missing one, um, if you're missing progesterone, but you still have estradiol, 
that's when it really goes to hell in a handbasket in yep. terms of symptoms. Yep. Um, all those perimenopausal symptoms like tender breasts, mm -hmm. um, mood swings, you know, the, mm -hmm. the need to tear somebody's, you know, jugular out um, if they just say the wrong word, um, just sadness, um, yep. bloating, all those perimenopausal symptoms start kind of, um, they, they can be starting as, as early as late, as late, 30s now but typically it'll be into the early 40s and it's because of the difference in the two levels of those two hormones mm -hmm. so perimenopause can last 10 years for some women mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I found out early on was that by supplementing with progesterone um, I could close that gap I still had plenty of estrogen but I was losing the progesterone and so by adding some of that back in I just didn't have that gap mm. and I, um, I'm not bragging, honestly, I'm just describing, <laughs> I flew through this phase because uh, I had closed that gap. Yeah. So eventually, um, estrogen levels begin to fall and estrogen is the big driver, um, of, uh, you know, the length of our cycles. Mm -hmm. So over time, with that, as estrogen levels are dropping, our cycles are getting longer and longer apart, or they might even be getting shorter. They could be get going down from 28 days to 25 to 24, sometimes mm -hmm. even 21 days. Often that's kind of related to low progesterone. But eventually, the gap between them lengthens, and you might have mm -hmm. a period for um, every three or four months. That's mm -hmm. really what we would call the menopause transition, because... Everything yes. is really shutting down. Yep. Um, we are in menopause or we are post-menopause when we have not had a period for 12 months. Okay. And that period after that is post-menopause. So oh. it could be, you know, six to 10 years beforehand is perimenopause. That menopause transition can be, you know, three to... Um, one year mm -hmm. and then thereafter the world awaits <laughs> so I would be post-menopause yeah yeah and I can totally relate to a lot of those symptoms you were talking about in perimenopause it was awful I mean I was having you know a cycle every two weeks and then I mean for a while I was like what is going on and of course I was like so fatigued hot flashes mm -hmm. apparently i had mood swings but i don't believe it no. i don't believe you did no i don't no. think i was just happy all the time i don't know what you're talking about no. <laughs> but you know what that <laughs> i mean i was telling you like i feel like in the last few years finally like menopause is being talked about i mean shoot oprah's talking about it so and kate wells is talking about it <laughs> Wendy Valentine's talking about it. So it must be important, but it's about time that they start talking about it and openly because it affects so many, it affects all of every single woman, right? It's not right. There's no way yeah. it can't affect you. Every woman will go through menopause and yeah. um, it's horrific that mm -hmm. there hasn't been better support for women. Um, mm -hmm. I think, this is my opinion only i think a piece of it is to do with um you have got uh, still a lot of practitioners who are men yep. and are not really interested or trained in um mm -hmm. understanding the biochemistry of all of this truly what is going on yeah. um and without that training i mean some of them some of them get less than five hours of training on menopause when they go through medical school and if it's not an area of specialty, they're not going to go back and specialize in it. Um, women's health, particularly women's hormone health, in my opinion, is a specialty. Mm. And practitioners um, can, cho can choose to really expand their knowledge of this. Yeah. Now, some of that does fall into OBGYN work, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yet there's still a lot of um, gynecologists who have not dug into this side of things to really mm -hmm. understand um, hormones. And of course, you know, we're, every every hormone that I mentioned, I'm talking about 
the use, I'm going to use the term bioidentical hormones. Mm -hmm. So these are hormones that are manufactured um, to have the exact same chemical structure as mm -hmm. the hormone that we would make in our body, mm -hmm. um, rather than okay. the pharmaceutical hormones, um, which are often, um, they don't have that same chemical structure. So they may have some of the effects that we were after, but they may also have side effects. So Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify that for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you did. Um, what are the, so the other two products that you have besides the silky peach? Um, so we have our vibrant third progesterone and, you know, I mentioned that I had started using that in my late forties. Um, I have never stopped. I still use progesterone and it's one of, I mean, it helps my brain. It's good for my bones. It helps my mood. Um, it, uh, it helps me sleep. Mm -hmm. um, so there are many ways that progesterone can really support the body um, and brain on a continuous basis. Mm -hmm. um, and we called it vibrant third because as women are heading into their late 50s and early 60s and onwards, we want their lives to be as vibrant as, yeah. as they possibly can be. Yes, um, I agree. So, yeah, that's what I'm always on here preaching about. Right, like, <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, at this point in our lives, we yeah. have done so much. We have learned so much. We have just got our act together. Yeah. And, um, you know, far from fading away, yeah. this is the time where we can blossom I know. into bringing so much wisdom into the world. And, yeah. you know, when we feel good and when we feel strong and when we feel well, mm -hmm. there's there's nothing that we can't do. And so yep. one of the other creams that we have is a DHEA cream. Um, mm. It's called Rebounce because um, women rebounding into this phase of their lives. So DHEA, this hormone used for so many things in the body um, in its own right, as well as being a precursor to the other, some of the other hormones. Mm -hmm. um, we have that available for our postmenopausal women who are just like listless tired miserable yeah so that helps them mm -hmm. and then um we've all heard about anxiety and mm -hmm. the increase of anxiety that people yes. are experiencing i mean honestly when you look around and think what's happened perhaps in the last five years in particular oh. it's it could be hard to be consistently cheerful yep. um but not everybody wants to go on an anti-anxiety med yep. and so we have chaos calmer <laughs> which is a cream specifically i love chaos, chaos. Calmer. I've, I've used <laughs> chaos calmer and it does work i love it um I'm a, I'm a pretty calm person but um if i've had a day where there has been so much coming at me that by the end of the day my my brain just feels like it's a cartoon like exploding thing going on up here <laughs> i put a little bit of that chaos calmer on and my headache just within 10 minutes yep. it's just yep. gone so it's for anxieties, yeah. for tension, um, and helps with sleep. So, yeah. Yeah. I actually, I uh, we had talked about this a little bit before, but cause we had an interview scheduled, I think it was a couple months ago. And then I had gotten bad mm -hmm. news like that day. And I was like, ah, I don't think I can do an interview right now, but I did reach for the chaos calmer Kai, mm -hmm. because it was like, I needed that, but it has worked for me with headaches, migraines, even, um, very, very amazing. And what I like about your products is that because it's lotion and it's applied directly to the skin, which is correct me if I'm wrong, science yep. nerd, it's the largest yep. organ on your body, right? It's your Absolutely, skin. Yeah. So it yep. absorbs so quickly to where mm. you can get results very, very quickly, which, mm -hmm. you know, as women, sometimes we're like, okay, let's go. Like, like, you know, we right. want a quick fix, but it truly, really, just like I was saying with the um, peachy, the peachy cream, mm -hmm. right. Same thing. Very, very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. absorbed. And, and one of the, the big advantages of using a cream um, rather than taking a pill is that when you take a pill, um, think about it, it's down your throat into your stomach. Yes. It needs to get broken down in your stomach first, mm -hmm. which takes some time. Yep. And then everything gets shunted off to the liver and has mm -hmm. to be cleaned up in the liver and you lose 80 to 85% of it in that sort of liver processing, metabolizing phase. Yeah. And then eventually you're left with 
15% of whatever it was you were taking. Whereas topical goes straight into your thin areas of your skin, yep. into your blood system, into your um, lymph, which is another mm. fluid system that distributes things throughout your body. And by jolly, by golly, there you go. Yep. You've got your your hormones where you need them straight away. So that makes sense um, now that you said that, why you put it on those thin areas like your wrist or maybe like the mm-hmm. back of your knee or where mm-hmm. else, right? Where, yeah. Else. yeah, you want it mm-hmm. into wherever you can see veins. Um, uh-huh. because your blood system, your capillaries mm-hmm. and your veins and your uh, arteries, um, they are their system. They will latch onto those um, hormones that are in the cream mm-hmm. and they, um, those red blood cells are, act like a little taxi. They'll grab mm-hmm. that hormone and as they move throughout the body, they'll carry those hormones to the receptors where they're needed all over the place. So, so cool. And then, like I say, some goes into the lymph as well, the other fluid that, that, that moves at a slower rate through our body. Um, and that can um, also spread hormones around. And the stomach's not involved. Though, um, so it's so it's pretty fast. That's amazing. The human body, like the more I learn about it, I can yeah. see why you're a science nerd. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Like, oh, I know. A question for you. So do you have to get your hormones tested or can you just jump right in and just start using the creams? We would love it if our Mm -hmm. customers um, could get their hormones tested. Mm -hmm. Um, There are many practitioners who say, oh, you don't need to do that. You're postmenopausal. Back to the the wishing for (laughs) physical abuse. Um, (laughs) But um, one of the things that's important is when someone is using topical creams, they always want to test mm. their hormones in saliva. Um, mm. And because it just so happens that the membrane on the saliva gland is fine enough that it will allow the bioavailable, the unbound hormones in there. Mm. So when you measure how much hormone is in saliva, you know how much of that unbound hormone, the available hormone is um, within the body. Mm. Um so ideally, yes. Um, when it comes to the estriol cream, because it's such a, a gentle estrogen or weak estrogen, mm-hmm. many women are pretty safe to start using that. Um, yeah. The amount that we have in the cream is really low. And so um, it's unlikely to elevate their estrogen levels too much. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but so that's good looking, to know. Yeah. Yeah. And we mm-hmm. are looking into... Um, being able to offer that as a service. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I have a long career in um, lab testing. And so um, it would be totally cool if we can provide that for our ladies. I Again, ideally, we would love it if our ladies can get the help that they need from their practitioner. What we're doing is filling a gap where they can't. Yes. So, so they can fill in the gap with their hormones. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Build that home and gap. Yeah. By the way, I love your accent. It's so cute. Thank you. Where are you from originally? I grew up in the northeast of um England in a, oh. a town called Newcastle. Oh. So I have a slightly more northern accent than a southern English accent. Yeah, it kind of goes in and out. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. she has an English accent. No, she doesn't. Where'd it go? Like these sort of things that you I've, say. Like I've been here 30 years. And so um you know, if I'm if I'm on the phone, I have to become very American because <laughs> otherwise there's just a silence at the end of the phone. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love it. I'm like, and so, sometimes I can't even concentrate. I, <laughs> I know sometimes I can't even concentrate. I'm like, oh my God, I could just sit here and listen to your accent. I'm like, I, I really want to like the next time, lifetime I come back, if that's possible, I'm going to come back with an English accent. I'm just letting you know. But the midlife make of a show. Yeah. It's gonna be. <laughs> I, I just watched some tea. Cups of tea. I just watched uh, Notting Hill. And you remember the one scene with Hugh Grant? Oh. And then he he was trying to get over the uh, the fence there, and he mm. goes, "Oh, whoopsie Daisy!" And she's like, "Whoopsie Daisy!" She's like, Gr- "Little girls, only little girls say that from like the nineteen fifties or something." Like it's so funny. He's like, "Whoopsie Daisy." 
<laughs> it's right. so cute. So, so where can we find you? Um, our website is uh, paula-games.com. So paula-games.com. And um, there's so much information there. We do um, a lot. We write a lot of blogs. Um, mm -hmm. We really want to be a resource for women as they're wanting to understand what's going on with their health. Yeah. Um, and so tons of blogs there, you know, our products are there. Um, you can contact us and ask questions. Our customer service team are just awesome. Yes, um, they are. I know they so, are. Um, I'm so, I mean, Kirsty and I constantly just appreciate how fortunate we are to have such a wonderful team. We're all women and, mm. uh, yeah, everybody's, everybody's awesome. And we'll, we'll try and, you know, I, can. um, I made a connection the other day. There's like a common thread through all of like the issues that we've just been talking about. If you think about it, it's, it's peri men, oh, pause, and then menstrual cramps. Men, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, Right. <laughs> Mental <laughs> health. Men. <laughs> Mental breakdown, men. Get it? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I so appreciate you and I love what you're doing for, for all of us women going through, uh, going through the change. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. This has been a great, uh, vagina dialogue. I, I appreciate being here. It's always such a joy to me to talk about this. Thank you so yeah. much for, for having me on and for asking such fun questions. Yeah. Oh, last question. Where did the name come from? Parlor games. Well, you know, for, for since time immemorial, women have sat around and shared ideas. Mm. Um, you know, more recent times, they sat in parlors sewing or knitting or, you know, plotting to overthrow governments or whatever it might be. But they, they sat around in parlors talking. Um, so that's kind of where parlor comes from, because we're, we're all in here as a sisterhood. And then games, mm -hmm. well, we wanted to put the games back in. The fun, the fun life. back in. Yeah. The fun. Yeah, the fun and games in bed. We wanted that back <laughs> in women's lives. So um, it's kind of a combination. That's where it came from. So I love I it. I love being yeah. part of your the, the parlor games. It's great. Mm -hmm. Making the women's lives better and happier and healthier. And like you said, I, what is it? Uh, science solutions and sisterhood it's perfect yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you so much kate oh and oh, make sure you, um everyone listening too like aren't you uh you have a facebook community oh we do for our yeah. customers yeah um, who have bought a product um from us we have a private facebook group called sexy sexy sisterhood and it's a safe private space yeah where women can talk about this very intimate area of their health. There are no men involved. It's all women. Um, it is sisterly. And um, there is there is nothing like it. it this is the brainchild of Kirsty, my business partner. She she knew that women needed to to talk about this, to yeah. have a place mm -hmm. to, to, to yeah. cry, to weep, to share the success, all of it. Um, yeah. 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 I've heard you, you just have so many amazing success stories and you're going to continue. It's, it's good. Well, we, that's what we're here to do. I mean, oh. for me personally, I'm on the, this earth to do this. Everything in my life when I look back has led up to this. And so yeah. I am incredibly fortunate as an, yeah. as a person who to be doing what is my mission work in this life. So mm. thank you for letting me talk just a little bit about that today. Yeah. And I can relate to that, that everything in my life has led to this, to this moment uh, with what I do. So thank you. you you're great. As are you. Thank Yay. you. This has been lovely. Thank you. All right, ladies, get on to uh, parlor-games.com, right? Yep. And uh, right. yes, check out their products. They're amazing. I can vouch for it. All right. Have a great day, everyone.